free a junior application developer co-op for the fall 2020 term at CEL Systems. And this is an overview of the Link Checker app and the work that I've done on it this term. So the app was created and has been maintained since 2016. The purpose of the app is to go through all of the links that are present in Learn or CMS courses and to determine which ones are broken and which ones are working. The app is a Ruby on Rails application which follows the Model View Controller Design Pattern or MVC. To explain this simply, the model is the actual data created by the app. The app is what the user sees and interacts with. And the controller is what processes, requests, and controls what happens in response. For a web application like the Link Checker, the browser interacts with the controller, which interacts with the models in the database, then generates a response with the data provided and communicates the response through the view back to the browser. The app uses MariaDB for its database, which uses MySQL. There are nine tables within the Link Checker database. Uh, eight tables are shown here with all its columns or attributes. And there's also an images table that is much like the links table, but for image links. The user table contains all the users that have access to the application. The searches table contains all of the searches for a user. The URLs table contains all URLs that belong to a search. The pages table contains all URLs that are pages. The links table contains all links that are in the page of a URL or page. The audits table represents an audit or description for a URL's uh, validity. The status table contains all the possible statuses or errors that a URL can have. And the rules table contains the rules of the app, which I'll explain later. The app uses Nginx and Passenger for its web server. Nginx is a very common web server and Passenger is a web server that integrates Rails applications with Nginx. And to do its web crawling, the app uses Selenium, a framework for automated web browsing, and PhantomJS, which is a headless web browser. On the front end, the app uses technologies such as React, CoffeeScript, and Bootstrap. So on to how the app actually works. You start a search by inputting a course token, which is a unique identifier token that all Learn courses have. You can just run the search, which will use a default account that has access to all the courses, or you can use alternate credentials, which use those credentials to log in. After it is done authenticating, the app will then undergo a process to parse for links. This starts by retrieving the document object model or DOM of the home page using either Selenium or NetHttp requests. The DOM is then parsed for links using XPath, which is a query that searches through the DOM for elements. These links include hyperlinks with the HTML anchor tag, web assets with the link or script tags, images with the IMG tag, and HTML frames with the iframe or frame tag. If a link is found that is an internal page, it's added to the queue to undergo the same process to be parsed for links. For the actual validation of the links, the links undergo various checks for errors. This includes the format of the URL, the course token in the URL if it's internal, disallowed keywords in the title or body of the page's HTML, and also rules. After these initial checks, the app uses Selenium to navigate to the link to see if the page can be retrieved. The link is a web asset or file, which is determined by seeing if the link ends with a file extension, such as .doc or .pdf. It will be validated by sending a JavaScript or NetHttp request and reading the response code. In the end of this process, the link will end up as valid if it passes all of the checks or invalid with an error status based on where it failed. As mentioned before, the app has a set of rules. These rules are strings and URLs are checked to see if any of the rule strings are present in the URL. If the URL satisfies a rule, it is treated accordingly. There are four types of rules. 
No follow rules are for links that are not processed and also not scanned for links. No scan rules are for links that are processed but are not scanned for links. No token rules are for links that do not need to have the course token in its URL to be processed. And script rules are for scripts that cannot be validated or followed. After a search is complete, a report is generated with all the data that was generated in the search. There are different filters done with SQL queries, such as all correct and correct rules, and all internal external and these can filter the pages or urls that you see these are the contributions that i have made to the link checker app i modified the app to check for web assets such as css style sheets and javascript scripts these links are found with xpath and then are validated as files I implemented a button to export external links to CSV, which could then be opened as an Excel file. This file could be sent to course instructors to enter replacement links for broken links, and then sent back to the QAs. Code was added to send a push to device when using alternate credentials with 2FA enabled. I created a restart page for use when restarting a search that originally used alternate credentials. A username was also attached to each search that saves what account was used for the search. I modified the app to know when the app was being blocked by a site from accessing its contents. This was usually done through robots.txt, which is a system that disallows web crawling. I helped fix some issues with the external and external filters and also image checking. I implemented an expand collapse all button for pages and URLs to show all links or pages for items in the report list. I installed a new instance of the link checker and upgraded Ruby and Ruby on Rails 5 to the latest versions and documented the process. And I resolved many, many bugs related to the app. So this concludes my presentation. I hope you learned something new regarding the link checker. Thank you.